Hi, this is Amelia and Elizabeth, and we are here with Philip from Chemist. Thank you for having this interview with us today. We really appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for having me. So what's been happening with you? How's everything been going? Um, it's going pretty well. Uh, I've been doing a lot of press for this album, which is always feels good to know that people are interested and um, feels good to finally have the album out. Uh, kind of rip that band-aid and you know get it out into fans hands around the world and um, seems like it's doing well so happy with that congratulations on it doing well so how have fans been finding the songs I'm sure you've got feedback um, I think uh, as far as I can tell everybody's really liking it I um, I don't have social media or anything uh, and so I don't really look at that stuff so most of it comes from what my bandmates have told me and I've been trying not to read reviews for the record, with a couple of exceptions. And uh, but the ones that I have seen have been really positive. So, uh, and I've been seeing that you know it's been selling well because we're selling out of everything. So um, that's always good. Um, so you know, seems like the response has been good. And everybody I've talked to since the record came out uh, has been really. I said nice things to say, and I've had some really good deep conversations with people about it. So it's good that it's having sort of the intended, you know, the intended uh, effect uh, because it's, it's it's an album that was hard to make and was personal to all of us. So it's good that it's getting people to connect with it in a personal way. And what was your writing and recording process? It was a little bit different than usual because, you know, we really didn't start writing the record, you know, in a really concerted way until uh, after the pandemic had shut everything down. And so the first, you know, four or five months of writing the record, um, we weren't able to get together and really play the songs or the ideas. And usually we've been really collaborative about how the songs come together. We'll, you know, get together in a room and jam them out and figure out what feels like the best flow for the ideas that we have and modify things and work on transitions. And, uh, for this, we just had to find a different way. And so, you know, it was really about embracing technology a little bit to share ideas over the internet. And, um, when we were able to get together, we had so many like full song ideas to work with that it, it made it, so that it, our job was a little bit easier when we all got together. We just got to kind of make sure that we knew what things were going to work as real songs when we play them and make sure that they're fun to play and that they feel natural. And that ended up actually changing quite a bit of the record, you know, just being able to play them. Then when we were in the studio, we just had more time than usual. And, you know, that just gave us a, more of an opportunity to sort of enjoy our time there and make decisions that otherwise we might not have made that I think leave the record feeling like a more dynamic piece of music than what we've been able to capture before. So, you know, it's an album that couldn't have been made in a different time period, you know, it really had to have been made because of the pandemic and the state of mind that we were all in uh, influenced it so much that it's not, you know, it, it's it's not the record that I would have thought we were going to make in early 2020, uh, but it's the record we needed to make by the end of 2020. How did you come up with your album cover and who designed it? And is there a meaning behind it? The album cover, it, it's drawn by uh, this guy who's local to us. We're, we're based out of Denver, Colorado uh, in the U.S. And... Um, we have a friend locally, his name is Sam Turner. He's done the album art for all of our records so far, um, for all of our full-length releases, at least. From day one, we've always wanted to have like a cohesive art aesthetic to the album art, and the same characters present across each of the albums, and sort of have them be telling a story, but not have it be too obvious. And part of that is like, at least for the last couple albums, I will come up with an idea and I'll sketch out what I'm sort of envisioning the record will look like. And it has to be like related to the album, like lyrics and how the sound is for it to make sense to me. 
I'll sort of draw that up and send it to him. And then we'll just have conversations about it like every three days as he's working on it and, you know, make sure that we get everything just right. So for this album, you know, we knew that the album was a darker uh, record than we'd made before musically and lyrically. And that it really content, it sort of lyrically is about confronting the voice in our mind that tells us that we're not good enough or that like we're broken or that our uh, struggles with mental illness or addiction or our family history or whatever it is that those things keep us from fulfilling everything that we want to in life because that's what the album is about the art I wanted to reflect that so you know it's this character who's confronting like literally his own reflection in the water but it's demonic and it's threatening to pull him under and he's living in this sort of like hellscape or, you know, to me, it's like more of like a purgatory, I guess. But, you know, he's basically a, a character who is reflecting kind of the setting in which I feel like I experience um, depression, where it's just like this purgatorial slog through you know the muck that we all sort of encounter in our lives and so that's what the character is experiencing on the cover as well and so you know it it aligns with both the lyrical concept the musical sort of feeling and the title deceiver you know he's literally like confronting the deceiver in the water and yeah, so it's we tried to sort of integrate it into everything, and you know, it's all a very cohesive piece. I really like the album cover. Great, yeah. I mean, I think it also just stands alone as a cool piece of art, you know. So anybody that thinks it's neat should feel free to get the vinyl so that you have a nice big twelve inch, uh, you know, version of the art to put up on your wall or something if you want. Yeah, you can frame it. Yeah, exactly. And I noticed you have a tour coming up, so that's exciting. Yeah, it's just kind of a short thing to make sure that we're getting to do something pretty soon after the album came out. But yeah, we're doing sort of the West Coast, the Western part of the U.S., um, and doing a couple dates in New York City in a couple weeks here, actually, in no in uh, December. So yeah, it'll be good to be back on the road again, play some shows. I think it still feels a little bit weird with... You know, the pandemic's like actually just as bad as it's ever been, and we're just kind of ignoring it. So it feels like kind of a strange thing to do, but um, still excited, anyways, as long as we kind of are trying to be careful about it. I don't want to put people at risk to come see a rock and roll show. It'll be fun to get to play music again for people. So, what can fans expect from your set? I think we're going to focus on trying to highlight stuff from every record. So, it's looking like right now we'll probably play two or so songs from each record. You know, that way people that really want to hear songs from Hunted or Desolation are going to hear those, uh, as well as a couple of new songs from Deceiver. You know, there's always a couple of fan favorites that we like to kind of pull out. And I think we're going to try and maybe do a song that we haven't ever really toured uh, with before, too, as like a little treat to people so yeah it should be a cool sort of career spanning set uh on this tour you should live stream it to your page yeah i mean it's the kind of thing that we've talked about doing um i think there's some sort of logistical hurdles to it and there's also a part of me that kind of lives like in the past where i like that a live show just happens in that moment and like only the people that paid to be there are there and that like they get to enjoy it and then it's over and and then it's just their memory of what happened rather than like committing it to a recording and then it existing for everyone to see and revisit. Um, Sometimes your memory of something, it doesn't improve if you see it again in a different context. And so some of the magic of a live show kind of gets lost from those sorts of things for me. So I'm a little bit conflicted about it, but you know, it, it's not something I would totally say no to. I'll put it that way. So speaking about memories, what's your favorite memory of watching someone else perform live? Can you tell us a story? Hmm, it's a good question. 
quite a few, I guess, but one that kind of immediately comes to mind is like a few years ago, the whole band went together to go see Black Sabbath on their farewell tour. That's cool. We had, we, you know, we paid quite a bit of money to have some really good spots for it. So we were like pretty close to the stage on the floor and, uh, just the like sheer badassness of them having like intro music playing and then all of a sudden the curtain just like gets lifted up suddenly and they are playing the first riff from Black Sabbath like the self-titled song from the first album it was just like such a badass way to open the show and it felt so powerful that was really really cool to see and then afterwards uh we were getting drinks and the guys from the band sleep were like at the bar that we were at and we just thought that that was like so fitting because like they're pretty much just like the best new version of black sabbath or newer version of black sabbath and so i don't know i thought that was pretty cool i went and talked to them for a sec but a lot of non-metal shows too uh, you know i grew up in the seattle area and I got to go see, you know, a lot of really cool shows in the 90s. I have a really fond memory of seeing the band LCD Sound System uh, opening for Arcade Fire at a basketball auditorium, like gymnasium thing um, at a school in Seattle. And that was like totally blew my mind. Just too many to name, but those are a couple, I suppose. That's awesome. What about you two? <laughs> what about us? I'm curious. Um, yeah. My favorite thing I go to every year is is Hellfest. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. So, have you been, or ha- do you know about it? I know about it, but I've never yeah. been. Uh, I have like a pretty good friend who has gone before and said it's just an amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, and I'd love to for us to play it sometime. Yeah, so that's my favorite thing. Who who is the like your favorite act that you've seen perform at Hellfest? Uh, Aerosmith was pretty good. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, Trollfest are funny on stage. Okay. Yeah. I don't really know that band. Oh, you have to look them up. They're hilarious. Okay. How about you? Emperor, I really like them. Yeah, we we played. Um, a festival in Montreal a couple of years ago uh, called Heavy Montreal that's kind of similar in spirit to Hellfest. It's like a really, really big festival that they put on. And Montreal is basically like France, uh, except for it's in Canada. Yeah, Emperor like totally blew me away. They were amazing. Yeah. Uh, they're really good live. Oh, they're really good not live. I just like their music. The live show was crazy, though. Um, Isan is such a good guitar player and vocalist at the same time. It's just like, just completely blowing my mind. And there was like a cool thunderstorm that happened while they were playing. That's so cool. And they, they played that album, uh, Anthems of the Welkin at Dusk. Um, That's a good album. All the way through for their set. So it was amazing. Have this thunderstorm and the album and they were just like so tight and on it. It was really cool. That's, awesome. That's another good concert experience. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now it's time for our signature question. So if you could have any band play one of your songs, which band would it be? Which song would it be? And would it be in your style or their style? Oh, my God. I wouldn't really want to hear any other band just play it the same way that that we do because, you know, what's the point? Yeah. Um, and I've always kind of felt that way about covers. But um, this would never, ever happen. But I would just love to hear Judas Priest play um, the song Hunted off of the album Hunted of ours. Um, it, Cause it's also sort of like a long epic track, which they are great at doing. And it has like several different sort of movements and it has like a, a riff that's like kind of like a Judas priest riff. And I just want to hear what Rob Halford would do with the vocals. You know, that's never going to happen, but I love the idea. <laughs> you never so know. Cool. Yeah, meet, true. You don't. You can meet them one day and then be like, "Hey, do we want to like do a cover of my song?" And they might be like, "Okay, we'll have a look at it and actually do it." So that would be so amazing. I know. I 
I would, I would, I would return the favor and try to recover one of their songs too, for sure. Um, but I don't know what song I would do. Maybe the Sentinel. I love that song. What do you think of the Firepower album? I loved it. It was amazing. The, Priest is like my all-time favorite metal band. So, yeah. um, I, but I haven't, you know, like always necessarily loved like every single thing that they've done, even if I can appreciate kind of everything. But my favorite stuff is like the '70s stuff before they kind of became like the Judas Priest that like we really know today that are just playing like capital H heavy metal. Um, I loved when they were kind of weird and did like lots of proggy stuff. And so I really like sad wings of destiny, sin after sin and stained class, but firepower. I, I loved like way more than you should for, uh, something coming from a band that's been around for almost 50 years. Like it was such a amazing sounding record. The songs are great. Uh, it's a pretty like dynamic album. There's like a ton of different stuff. It kind of feels like a little bit like one of those seventies albums in that way. Um, yeah, so I just loved it. And I feel like it was maybe Rob Halford's like very best sounding vocals ever, which is crazy. Cause he's, you know, almost 70 years old. Yeah. I thought it was an amazing album and talking about live stuff. I think they are amazing live no matter when I've yeah. seen them, they always put on a fantastic show. I know. I love them. Similar to the Black Sabbath show I was talking about earlier, uh, the whole band went and saw Judas Priest um, when they came through on the Fire Firepower tour, and they were, like, just so on it. And they were playing, like, such a cool set list. They had so much good old stuff that I wasn't expecting them to play. It was amazing. Yeah. Great, great band. Awesome. Um, last question. Is there anything else you would like to say to your fans? So the, to the Australian fans, talk to anyone you know that promotes music at venues that play metal uh, shows and say that you want to see Chemist. I would love to come over there and play. I've always wanted to visit and have never been. To American fans, uh, you guys have always been awesome to us, and I uh, I just can't wait to come and get to play these songs for everybody. Uh, we're going to have a lot more tour dates coming at some point in 2022, so hopefully I'll see everyone everywhere that uh, has any interest in seeing us. Yeah, just keep rocking on, keep hanging in there. To European fans, I mean, I guess same thing. Uh, I It's been too long since we've been over there. With the pandemic, uh, I'm not sure when things will be looking good enough for us to be doing something in Europe again anytime soon. I can't wait to make it back over there. Hopefully, we'll get to come over and do something with a really cool band, something we've been wanting to do for a while. And, you know, like, so if you're hearing this, uh, like Paradise Lost or Opeth or Enslaved, we would love to do a tour with you guys and uh, play for everybody. So... Yeah, Have you been to it. Japan? I wish that... I don't have no idea if people in Japan like us or not. I know that we have the records there finally now with Nuclear Blast helping us. And I've always wanted to go to Japan my whole life, probably more than any other place that I haven't been. And so um, I was hoping that if we make an Australian thing happen, that we would just sort of turn it into a Pacific tour and do New Zealand and Japan. Uh, Konichiwa, Japan. I want to come and play shows there. Maybe we can make a live album. We have to do a live in uh, Japan, live at Budokan, uh, Unleashed in the East, uh, our own version of that. I would be extremely excited about that. Japan is amazing. You're going to love Japan when you go. Yes. I've, yes. I've been to Southeast Asia a fair amount, but I've never been to Japan. So I'm really excited. Move that to the top of your list. Done. <laughs> Done. And when you go, go to the robot restaurant. Okay, I've heard about this place. Yeah, yeah. I think I've seen it on TV. Yeah. On you know some travel show or whatever. So there are two. Okay. There's one where robots serve you, and there's one where it's an actual show in front of you, and it is so cool. And I've never seen anything like it in my life. <laughs> 
Nice. <laughs> so you I think have I, to go. I think I've seen both on TV, and I definitely want to go to the one that's a show. Yeah. I feel like the, U- the U.S. version of this is like going to Texas to a honky-tonk and seeing <laughs> like a mechanical bull that people ride, and that's not, it's not as cool. No. Well, thank you so much for this interview today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, yeah. Thanks, you both. Uh, have a great rest of the day. Yeah, yeah I hope you too. have a good day. Hope